So hello everyone. Today is March 15. Spring is all around and uh, my name is Inessa Misietskaya. I am the member of Inclusive Practices Coordination Board. Our non-profit organization Inclusive Practices is focused on community development and disabilities. And uh, from 2018, we are the member of the International Association for Community Development, the only global multidisciplinary network for those who work in the field of community development. And uh, ACD, uh, ICD is accredited with the United Nations and uh, has members all across the world. And we are very proud to be the part of this global network. And we see our mission in promoting the values of community development in the post-Soviet countries. Uh, and uh, today on this live stream, we will talk about World Community Development Conference, conference uh, which is organized by IACD together with national partners uh, in uh, uh, in 2021, uh, uh, World Community Development Conference will be organized in virtual format for the very first time. And uh, we would like to say that the virtual format opens a great opportunity for the participants uh, in our region uh, because the most uh, people, especially those who have disabilities, uh, for them, uh, to visit Kenya will be not available. And that's why I want to inform all our friends and all our partners about this conference, uh, because the experience uh, we all have, uh, we will can, could, could get through this conference, uh, through this event is priceless. Uh, so, that's why now I am happy to introduce our dear guest. This is Charlie McConnell. Uh, Charlie is the previous president and secretary general in, of IACD. Uh, Charlie has had nearly 45 career in community development. Uh, he was the author of IACD definition of community development as a practice-based profession. And uh, Charlie chaired the IACD working group, which produced the international standards for community development. And on behalf of inclusive practices, I would like to take this opportunity to express appreciation to Charlie McConnell uh, for his support on our first uh, inclusive practices festival, uh, for his warm and his friendship. Hello, Charlie. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Добрый вечер, Инесса. Спасибо большое. Добрый вечер. Добрый вечер, Charlie. Uh, and uh, Daniel Muya from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, Daniel is our friend and he's a senior lecturer in psychology at Kenyatta University. He is the current chairman of the Association of Community Development Practitioners, Kenya and chair of World Community Development Conference uh, 2021. Daniel has done research and published books, book chapters and uh, journal articles in community development, community mobilization, uh, empowerment, uh, human rights-based development, sustainable development and governance process. Today, Daniel will tell us about an uncommon World Community Development Conference 2021 in Nairobi. So you can prepare your questions for him. Daniel, uh, we were so happy to have this opportunity to meet you here during our second in Inclusive Practices Festival in Ureki. It was a wonderful time that uh, we spent together. It was great practice exchange. Uh, so we are very glad to see you here today. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Inessa. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate and great to be associated with inclusive practices. I had some of my best moments during the second uh, inclusive practices festival in Ureki. 
Thank you. Yes, it was a great time. Thank you. And also, I would like to say, Charlie and Daniel, uh, there are a lot of people from Inclusive Practices Village in Reiki watching this live stream right now. They are, yes, they are very happy to see you here and they miss you and they hope that you uh, will visit Ureki as soon as it's possible. Sure. Yeah. Looking forward to sure. Say hello to them. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. hello. Yeah. <laughs> so we are ready to start. Mm. And Charlie, now I would like to give you a floor. Please tell us about World Community Development Conference, about the idea and the history of this occasion. And uh, dear friends, you're welcome to send the comments uh, on Facebook. Our guests will be happy to answer them. Charlie? Thank you, Spasila. Um, at the International Association for Community Development has been uh, going for since the 1950s. It was set up, supported by the United Nations. Uh, and it was initially, our headquarters were in New York. And then in the 1970s, they moved to Belgium. And now, since the 1990s, they have been in Scotland. And we were set up to be an, a network, an association of practitioners, scholars, teachers, researchers, students, activists, volunteers, who are involved in community development around the world. And I'll just say a couple of words before I answer about the World Community Development Conference. Um, the one thing that we are all involved in is helping some of the most disadvantaged and vulnerable people around the world. And they can be disadvantaged and vulnerable in many ways, disability, poverty, uh, environmental pollution, I mean, a whole range of different things. And in community development, we try and look at the total community and of all the issues and the problems and the hopes and aspirations that the community has. So we look at the community's social concerns, environmental concerns, cultural issues, political, economic. And this is why many disciplines are involved in community development. So we have social workers involved in community development, economic workers, environmental workers, artists, all sorts, all sorts, filmmakers, all sorts of people, architects, designers, people who are there to help the community become more informed, more educated, better organized, to help them improve the conditions in their lives and to improve the opportunities that they have. In other words, to help them overcome the disadvantages and vulnerable communities and vul vulnerabilities that they face. So ever since the 1950s, the members of the association have been meeting every one or two years for an international conference. And since that time, I, I was looking back today and I think we've run about 40 conferences in different parts of the world. Uh, it was the Irish Association in Maynooth just um, in 2018 that had a wonderful idea. They said, let's not just call it an international conference, let's call it the World Conference. Mm -hmm. So the title World Community Development Conference is only uh, three years old. Mm -hmm. But our international conferences have been going since the 1950s. I, I have been involved since the 1970s and I joined the board in 1989 and I've been to um, 20 of these conferences in different parts of the world. And the International, the, the International Association brings people from the West, the East, the North, the South to come and share their practice, to meet together, uh, to get involved, to listen to each other's scholarship, to listen to each other's case studies, to look at films, to get involved in drama, whatever ways they want to present what it is that they are doing on, on the ground and trying to understand what is working and maybe what is not so effective. And, being, and our conferences are about that exchange. So each, as I say, every one or two years, 
Uh, we've been doing that all around the world, and we've done it several times in Africa, several times in Europe, in North America, in Asia, the different con continents of the world. Um, so this one in 2021, which uh, Daniel has been very cons most closely concerned with as the chair of the conference, is the first time in our history that our conference is virtual. Okay, so a long answer. I hope that maybe explains what <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> yes, uh, Charlie, we have one question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, such a long way in community development, almost 50 years, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, so can you tell us what was the uh, most inspiring episode or situation for you during all these years of work? Uh, maybe something uh, in your everyday work or something during the conference uh, which makes you to think, wow, working for community development is the only thing I should do in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, privileged. I'm middle class. I have higher education degrees. Uh, my parents were not poor. Um, but when I was looking for a career in the early 1970s, uh, as part of my undergraduate degree, there was a course in community development. The rest of the degree was concerned with politics, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, this is fascinating that I, I, I can go out and work with communities. I, I, I suppose what led me to be involved in this work was, was a sense of morality, I suppose, a sense of passion to want to be involved helping people who, who had... Uh, far worse conditions in their lives than the privilege I've had. But by working in community development and seeing community development projects, for 10 years I was a, a lecturer in community development, then I was the principal of a college later in my career. So I've seen many projects and heard many students and activists talking about their work. And I, there's not one, I'm trying to think, think of a single moment. What, what I would say is working with disadvantaged and vulnerable communities, inverted commas, yeah. is a privilege, mm -hmm. it's a great privilege as a practitioner. And to go to places which I first went to when I was a student, very poor areas in, in, in Scotland, this was in very deprived, terrible housing, awful unemployment, that you go in people's homes and they're clearly materially poor people and people who are poor people who don't have much money people who grow up in a poor environment you look at the statistics and you will find they're more likely to be disabled they're more likely to have mental stress problems all these problems one adds to the other and makes life challenging very challenging so and i met with people who were very poor of some disabled I, I remember one person who had a hypercephala, a very large head. And in those days, and there was another person with microcephala. These people were locked away in my country. They were put in institutions, locked in institutions. But there was nothing really wrong with them. They just looked different. And I remember talking with these two people. It was a man and a woman, and they were both in love. But in this institution, they were not allowed to hold hands. It was forbidden to hold hands. Yeah. Uh, it was terrible. It was a model of social work that was terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, uh, fortunately, that has very largely changed. And I think that um, a community development approach to that, an empowering approach to that has changed an awful lot of that. But I know we all in all of our countries have a legacy of that terrible institution is institutionalization. So meeting those people for me was the privilege and it certainly uh, convinced me I was in the right job. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for your answer and for these episodes. Uh, very precious. Um, later, we also will have uh, another questions and questions uh, from our subscribers uh, on Facebook. Uh, now I would like to ask Daniel, uh, 
uh, a little bit about uh, Uncommon World Community Development Conference uh, 2021 in Nairobi. And uh, I want to ask you about the focus of this conference. Thank you, Nessa. We have um, the World Community Development Conference 2021. And of course, before I talk about uh, 2021, of course, I think uh, it's important to say that um, the ISCD board in 2019 resolved that the, 20, the World Community Development Conference was going to be held in Africa. And uh, normally the conference is held with either a partner organization or a member who can spearhead the conference. And so we had the opportunity to be selected to host the World Community Development Conference 2020, which of course, because of COVID was, has now transitioned into World Community Development Conference 2021. The focus of the conference, the broad theme is again to explore issues that are critical to community development. And the main theme we are calling it community development, our connectedness, resilience, and empowerment. Community development, our connectedness, resilience, and empowerment. Let me talk about these three concepts. The concept of community development, of course, tell us sort of unpacked in the sense we are talking about a profession and a practice which goes into enabling communities to become stronger together and also to address their everyday concerns at, com at community level and also building the supporting systems which will make their lives much better. But then the first component we are saying we want to explore the aspect of connectedness because our understanding and the, what we are trying to bring about during the conference is a, is a discussion that until communities are connected, they can't pull the energies that make them human together and that humanize the communities. And the first, and the first port of call in improving people's livelihoods, people's standards of living is to discover that they are connected one into the other. It doesn't matter what environment they find themselves in. And the, the, what Charlie has already indicated is very important. People are so disadvantaged, yet they are so close together. And that's what we want to bring about. Take into account that the world increasingly because of technology and so many other pressures is breaking people and moving people to start operating as, on an individual basis. And this conference is a call through looking at the connectedness to us to look at what are some of those issues, factors, processes that can enhance the connections between communities so that then we build stronger communities, groups of communities working together to address matters of common concern. Because the community is, is a group, also the community is occupying the global space that we are given in and also the virtual space that we are in. Unless we maintain our connectedness, then of course other processes, other, other challenges would come in, which then will make us more vulnerable even to all the pressures that would come in. And like we've seen already, if I just digress a bit, with COVID, the connectedness has now been proven to be the most important value in communities. People are looking out for each other, even in situations where governments are not able to look at each other. And that brings us to the second component on resilience. We want to look at in life and in communities, there are going to be shocks. There are going to be events that will bring instability in the community. But then we also want to understand how do communities organize themselves to bounce back and to be maintain a sense of balance in the face of these all these challenges. And so that will be the second component of the conference. And then the last bit is empowerment. We want to look at how can we make everybody stronger together? How can we make everybody stronger together so that then they can be able to support each other, support their, their, their social environment, support their government systems, or even challenge the government system to do what they're supposed to do to make the lives of members of communities much better. And that's basically what we are trying to, that's basically the focus of community development. 
our connectedness, resilience, and empowerment. That's a broad theme. Of course, to do this, to, to achieve this, we have sub themes, some small, small sub areas of, of focus, which are which are twelve, so that then we can be able to to focus the discussion much further, looking at the theoretical aspects, theoretical perspectives of community development, looking at uh, also community development practice in change in situations of change and uh, transformation. We'll also look at uh, community empowerment frameworks where now we're inviting the academicians to, to look at what are some of the frameworks that work in community development. How can we make it, how can we apply them now in working with communities to make them their lives better? And then the fifth focus will be about human rights, issues of social protection, issues of social inclusion, where we want also to call into place matters of social justice and fairness as we do community development. Then we'll look at, we have a theme on the role of stakeholders. There are so many people who have, and who have a stake and interest, organizing we have a stake in community development. What is their role? The international community, the development partners, the governments, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, and the members of the communities themselves. What is their role in transforming lives within communities? And then, of course, there is also the now the what we are discussing about community development standards and ethics. So that as we do community development work, it is also founded and grounded on standards that are applicable globally because communities are the same everywhere. But they need we need to subject them to the common standards of operation, common standards of practice, and also ethics, which is about the values in terms of what needs to go in, in terms of what should be done, what should not be done and what is right and what is wrong in community development so that you can get, safeguard the interests of everybody. And then there is a focus, they will, be, will also be focusing on gender, which is an important area of concern because gender power relations are also important in defining community development practice. And so there'll be a, a theme to look at this because in some communities you find, especially women are completely disadvantaged and increasingly young men are also becoming vulnerable and young women are becoming vulnerable. And we want to understand how can we take care of the interest in community development. Then uh, we focus on sustainable development goals as a sub theme. And then we'll look at also now the issue of training and education. What is the role of trainers, educators in community development and developing the practice, developing the discipline. Then there will be a specific, a special also theme on community development with, within vulnerability context. And this where, for instance, in inclusive practices come in, where we have groups that are completely vulnerable, either by, by, by what, from whatever nature, it could be physical, physical, physical challenges, or even vulnerable because they're exposed to some shocks. Migrant communities, communities that are under threat because of natural calamities. Also groups that are, for instance, in prison or incarcerated, who don't have any rights. How can we make their lives better? better. And then now there will be a topic on social risk management. We, there are a lot of things that are happening and we need to be able to understand how can we manage the risks that are emerging in society. And then lastly, we will have a topic now that opens the way forward for community development, where we will now be focusing on the emerging issues in community development. What are some of the things now that are becoming important as we do community development? Just like now we have been challenged by COVID, we need to be ready. Epidemics are going to be with us. Climate change and the climate justice are going to become issues that are important to us. And so that will be a topic that now a theme, a sub theme that will open us now for discussion on the way forward. So that then we can also prepare the practice and also prepare the discipline for the issues that are coming up and becoming important and they need to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for your answer. Uh, and uh, you know, for our audience who is interested in the field of community development, I would like to ask you, Daniel, and you, Charlie, uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, principal difference between uh, social work and uh, community development to make their understanding clear. Okay, I'll have a go. And Daniel, who works in, in a social work department, I think, can we'll... we'll is what I'm sure uh, have his views as well. Um, as we said earlier, uh, 
many disciplines are involved in community development because people communities face many problems, not just social problems. They face economic problems, environmental problems, etc. Just you know, race discrimination, whatever that that problem is, and challenges in their life, political powerlessness, all these sorts of things. So social workers are vital. It's a vital discipline that has a role to play in community development, but you also need other specialists. So if you like, community development is a field that embraces many disciplines who are specialists in their area, but it encourages these disciplines to work together to help look at the issues that this a particular community is facing. This community may be a, a poor neighborhood in a city, or it may be a community of identity, disabled people. Okay, and we'd say, well, there's not just social problems here, and they're not just social challenges here, there are other challenges as well. So if you like, it's a way of looking at the community. It's saying it's not a silo, it's not a narrow, no single discipline can solve that whole community's or can help work with that community to solve all of its social problems. It requires other people to work. Uh, other specialists as well. So what you find historically over the last five or six decades since community development has been promoted by the United Nations is that many social work uh, graduate courses and undergraduate courses will include community development as part of that degree. They will also include other approaches as part of that degree and, and I'm sure Daniel will talk about this in more detail he's currently involved in it. You will also find some architecture and design students will have community development as part of their degree. How do you engage with the community, work with it to redesign the built environment? So for disabled people, it's more accessible. There are ramps, there are shots. It's about people shaping the built, the built environment. Similarly, if you're working in local economic development work and you're doing a degree in that sort of field of work, uh, what role can you play working with disadvantaged communities to help regenerate their local economy, create jobs, et cetera, build enterprises? Now, those skills don't come from social workers. They probably come from local economic development workers. Similarly, as, as Daniel has said, we have this huge crisis of climate change and we need people with expertise in biodiversity and ecology and environmental work. And there are more and more of those people who want to work with communities to help them mobilize them, to organize them, to deal with the shocks of climate change. For, I'll give you an example, it is estimated that by the end of this century, Bangladesh, the country of Bangladesh, much of it will disappear under the sea. So hundreds of millions of people around the world will be moving because of growing deserts, melting ice, you know, um, ice caps, uh, rising sea levels, etc., deforestation. So you need people with expertise in environmental work, forestry work, um, different types of farming methodologies. You need those people working in community development as well. So that, so that the, I, I think the difference is that social workers are a key part, key parts of the support uh, with their expertise that you can give, but you need other people as well. So in IACD, we say we are a multidiscipline, many disciplines, profession, a multidiscipline profession. So you could call yourself a social, I'm a social worker, and I'm also a community development practitioner. I'm an architect, and I'm also a community development practitioner. It is about the way in which you bring your, your specialist expertise to work with disadvantaged and vulnerable communities. It's the approach you take and the approach that is common to all of those, we say it's an educative approach. It, it, it's an educational approach. You're helping people develop their knowledge, their skills, their expertise, their confidence. It's an organizational approach. You're helping to build stronger organizations, community organizations that are resilient and can deal and have a stronger voice. And, and which is also about empowerment. Uh, Daniel also used that word as part of the conference. It is. So it's a way of working with people that is not about telling people this is how you do it. It's about working with people in an educational, organizational and empowering way. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you want to add to that, Daniel? I mean, it's a... Yeah. Thank you. You, have you, have done, you have done very well. I could just make a small addition to what, uh, to what you've said. Because again, there is always the question of which one is the bigger one of the two, the social work or community development. But uh, for, from technically what happens is that um, community development is about people collectively working together to address matters that they agree are of common concern to them. And so there needs to be the collaborative aspect, people building consensus on what is important and what is also collectively affecting them and then finding solutions together to those solutions. Those solutions can be found from within the community or can be found from without the community. And so the community can explore the capacities that they have to address the concerns that they have, or they can build networks or reach out to governmental agencies or in other agencies out there who can be of assistance and support to address, to help them address matters of common concern. And so it is a collaborative discipline, is a collaborative approach to addressing matters of common concern, which the community has decided collectively by consensus, this is what is important for us. And so you find then different communities will decide what are the priority issues of concern for them. And that then is community development. The practice that comes in and the science that comes from that then builds what now becomes the practice. We are now the build modalities and, and the approaches of addressing those concerns. The starting point of course is where the people are and what they think needs to be done. Then the technical people can come in and then put in the different shapes. And this way now you find the social workers will come in, the economic uh, community development practitioners will come in if there are matters of community of economic imp importance, if it is about organizing the built space, then the engineers, the architects will come in and they try now to model the, the build the environment to suit in what the community thinks is important for them. And so that then is community development. But then there's the aspect of social work, which again, to a large extent is about addressing the concerns of people, getting, using skills to address the concerns of that are, that are of importance to people. And in terms of the approaches, again, community development is one of the approaches. There are three main approaches social workers would use. There are issues that will come in and people need to be assisted at an individual level to be able to adjust and function within the social environment in which they have. And here now, they would, the social workers will talk about casework. An individual has come up, they have serious issues which need to be sorted out, could be deviance, could be substance abuse or whatever. And so the social worker will need to understand this particular individual, what is the challenge? And they become a case. And of course, they look at their case, they might also want how to put it within the community context. But then they could, they would also case issues that need to be addressed through groups, matters that can only be addressed through groups. So we talk about group work. In, in, in social work, where then people are put in groups to address matters of co common interest to the to the to the to the to, to, to them, and then now there are also matters and issues that are community wide, that are widespread, which cannot be addressed on a community basis, and it is at that point now social workers move from now dealing with the individuals, dealing with the specific groups, now to dealing with with the communities, and now that. And that's where now you find the interface between community development in broadly defined and social work also defined as a discipline and as a practice. So th this is where we are. Thank you. Yeah. Back to Anessa. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Anessa. Are you, I think, are you, I can't see you on my, <laughs> hi. Hello. No, I hello. I'm sorry. Just, just one moment. Hello. Hello Hi. from Hi. the practices from Reiki. Um, my name is Anastasia Matvievska. I'm also from Inclusive Practices. Uh, just one moment. Uh, sometimes when we have a not very good weather in Reiki, when we have storm on the Black Sea, mm. <laughs> we have some problems with internet connection. Nice to see you today, Daniel, Charlie. Thank you very much for joining us. 
Uh, may I ask you one more question while, while we are waiting for Inessa? Uh, uh, tell me, please, um, from your point of view, from your uh, huge experience, um, uh, what is the difference uh, in the community development approaches uh, in different countries, for example, in the Europe region, in the um, Asian region? Is there is any difference in basic community uh, development approaches um, the, uh, yeah. from different regions? From uh, the, And uh, for example, if uh, we are talking about our countries, about uh, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, our post-Soviet countries, and we have so many people who are uh, in the starting point of uh, their uh, community development practice uh, and they uh, want to see some uh, examples how they can uh, do it uh, their first steps oh hello <laughs> nice to see you. so so uh, the first uh, steps uh, the best examples maybe of community development of most can I just say, are you coming in first? Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's an echo. Sorry. Um, now it's okay. Okay, thank you. Um, the words community and development are English words, mm -hmm. English language words. So, and in the English language, they're not precise words. They're, the word development could mean anything you know, building a high rise tower or, you know, whatever. It, it, development has such a loose meaning. And community can mean that there have been books written about hundreds of definitions of the word community. Uh, we, and combining those two terms together, what the United Nations originally meant, it was about giving technical assistance to low income countries and poor communities to help with their social and economic development and environmental protection. So it's a very general statement. What has happened over those five decades is through evaluation, through scholarship and through international conferences, there's been a lot of sharing of ideas uh, uh, and from different disciplines. So to, to get a more of a common understanding of what those two words mean when combined together that it, development does mean terms like helping people deal with change, helping people have improvement in their lives, helping people have sustainable change that also doesn't damage future generations. And community, we understand as meaning a locality, but also a community of identity or a community that shares common interests that they have. And nowadays you could say there are also communities online you know, it's a, uh, it, it is a very, very broad term. But what we found a few years ago when we were looking at, um, at this was that in those five decades, some countries and some academic courses had been using those terms differently. It had almost emerged organically and depending on the culture and how these courses were created. So we tried to, to get a common understanding through IACD which led to common standards. We wanted to have sort of quality standards that people would understand and, and share. And, and I, I think now after five or six decades, if you go to a conference and you meet architects who come to that conference, social workers who come to that conference, housing workers, people who are dealing with the local economy or whatever, uh, you're meeting practitioners, you're meeting act activists, there are some things we immediately know, no matter what country we're in, that there are issues like human rights we share in common, a belief in people having a say, uh, that even though I might be a technical architect or whatever, I'm going to, we're going to try and work with the community to co-design the solution, not have that solution imposed by a bureaucrat in some government ministry who says, this is what, the housing estate will look like and the, you know the old way that it used to be it's about working together co-design co-production sometimes as a community development practitioner you may also be in a role of challenging people 
you know it's uh, it's you're bringing expertise and local people yeah. are bringing the real expertise of what it's like to feel being disabled or what it's like to be poor you know and you've got the artists you're working together but the community i think this is why i say it's also it's an educational role educators hopefully are bringing new ideas new skills new ways of looking at problem solving as well as local people having their traditional ways or local wisdom of solving a prob problem and i think it's very much about working together so i think i slightly disagree with daniel where he says if you like and i may have misunderstood you dan dan, dan daniel because you explained it very clearly indeed uh, of where local people come up and want a problem solved they know what the problem is and they just bring in the technical experts to help them solve the problem they've identified it i think the technical experts also can be involved at the problem identification stage and you know and, and the problem could be your the way you're growing your forests the way you're growing your crops uh maybe female genital mutilation is not a good thing to be doing in terms of human rights. So you're challenging some traditional ways of doing things. Uh, and that leads to a dialogue and a conversation. Um, uh, but I think things, I think when I go to conferences, uh, by and large, I, I find the colleagues I meet with at, at certainly at IACD conference and world conferences, they have a lot, we share a lot in common, I think, Daniel, don't we, about social justice, human rights, democracy, people having a right to have a say, no matter how disadvantaged they are. They, they have a right to a voice and that we should be working with them, supporting them, not imposing a solution. Daniel, just, just, a, quick, just a quick addition. In, when, when you look at uh, the, the, the margins of community development and um, to a large extent, the, the, there has been the discovery that um, when governments try to impose solutions to community problems, most of the time there is a disconnect between what is happening at the local level in the community level and what the government officials might be interested in the trying to prosecute. And so increasingly there has been the realization that we need first to give the community a voice because also they, they understand their locality, they understand their context much better. And they also have, they have some resources, which now we can start with in addressing their concerns. Then what is in addition is now the practitioners, because of their, 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 their better knowledge, they, they, have, they, they are better trained, they, they have better exposure, then they can help the communities better address their concerns, including what now actually is to talk about challenging in some of the communities, for instance, some of the social cultural practices, uh, they can't pass the, the, the human rights standards. And that's now the role of the human, the, the technical person, the community development practitioner, now to bring them on board and now dialogue with the community so that they can see these practices can change. And then they manage that process of change so that at the end of it all, the human rights and the human dignity of the members of the community are protected and they are addressed. But starting with it, because as I said earlier, the top-down approach was that, that the communities were assumed to have no voice and to have no rights. Until now, over time, it was being realized that most of what the government was doing was not uh, sustainable because then the communities in many of the developing communities will say, these are government projects, these are government initiatives. And so there's no buying and there's no sustainability. Until now, the partnership is built on an equal basis where everybody sits on the table in a democratic process and then they agree what needs to be done and who is going to do what. The communities have their capacities, the government authorities have their capacities, the technical people are needed are brought on board and then the process is developed to the mutual benefit of everybody. And then a sustainable process is developed which then addresses the needs of the people as they see as they see them and as they are also helped by the technical people to see those needs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you yeah. so much. It's quite clear. And uh, Inessa, please, uh, can I ask one more question? Yes. <laughs> if I have this opportunity, I will do it, <laughs> if I could. Uh, 
uh, my first World Community Development Conference was, was my Nuth Conference uh, in Ireland in uh, 2018. And on this conference, um, uh, international uh, um, standards for community development practice was launched on that conference. And um, I was, uh, me and my colleagues, we were very inspired uh, by this publication because uh, from our point of view, it's very useful uh, tool for uh, understanding what is community development practice. And we translated these standards uh, in uh, Russian, in uh, Georgian, in Ukrainian, and also for some other languages. And um, to tell you the truth, uh, some, for example, in Belarus, we translated only for the Ministry of Education because yeah, <laughs> every, <laughs> every uh, um, person in Belarus can read it in, in Russian, of course, but the Ministry was so, uh, of Education was so proud that now they have international standard translate. And it is important to, for promotion of community development uh, values uh, sometimes. And um, I, I, I know that, uh, Charlie, you are one of the authors uh, of these uh, standards and uh, you are author of the um, Community Development Global uh, Definition. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the idea of the standards? Um, uh, because uh, I know uh, we translated for, uh, I think, for nine languages were translated. Yeah. And Daniel translated to Swahili, I saw this, and now it's translated um, into Spain and um, French, French yeah. and uh, Hindi. Hindi. And Hindi. Hindi yes. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Thanks to Anita Paul and her colleagues. Uh, but uh, I just think that I uh, know nothing about the, uh, how, how you find this idea, how you pray this. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the background of this publication? Oh, OK. Um... In 2016, at the American International Conference, uh, we announced a new statement on community development that said it was a practice-based uh, profession and that it was concerned with the education organization and empowerment of communities of identity, geography and, and uh, interest. And what we had also discovered prior to that, we did, we did a quick review of all the community development undergraduate courses that we could discover around the world. And we found about a thousand of these. Uh, sometimes sometimes, sometimes called, uh, community development, sometimes they were called rural development and community development, sometimes they were called social work and community development. But we looked at a whole range of courses and we said, does community development exist, exist in them? We then said, well, to what extent are those courses training you, not just educating you, but training you in the competences, the skills, et cetera, as well as the knowledge to practice, okay? So we're saying it's a practice place, it's a practice-based field, it's about practice. And we discovered that many of these courses were just purely academic. They were about the theories of community development not about the practice of community development. And what we're saying is if you want to practice, if you want to know how to do community development, you need knowledge, you need skills, and you need good values, good ethical values behind the work you do. So we looked at what had been happening in different countries around the world that had start, come up with this idea of why don't we have standards, competency standards, that uh, in different countries, so in Britain, South Africa, Ireland, there are a few others. About 20 years ago, they had a discussion about, should we standardize, standardize the community development education across our country? And I was very uh, honored. I was the chair of the very first of these national organizations that did that in the UK. And we basically said, what are the what are the competences? What do you need to know? 
what skills do you need and what values do you need to do that job, to do it, actually do it, not just talk about it, but do it. You can talk the talk, not just, you know, you can walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And um, we came up with these standards in the UK and there were other standards in different parts of the world. And after a while they were evaluated and these became nationally adopted by the governments in those countries, by the trade unions, by the main employers in the uh, state sector and in the non-governmental sector, by the professional associations and by the academic institutions. They accepted these national standards. So a very advanced one would be Scotland. They, they have an extremely good structure uh, for that. Um, but there are others around the world that I would commend as well. And what we decided to do, we looked at those national standards and we said, is it possible to internationalize those standards so that we could say, what are the core, the actual central competences you need to do this job, this practice based job well, whether you're a, a, an architect doing it, a social worker doing it, or a community worker doing it, or a rural development worker, or, and whether you're doing it in Kenya, or in London, or in China, or in Peru, or Georgia, or Kazakhstan, or, or wherever. Is it possible to say there are some, some common basic standards that is what community development is about? And so we came up with eight in the, in the national standards, in the international standards report. And these were drawn from those national experiences. So we didn't just sit in a room and say, oh, what are the international standards? We evaluated, looked at what had happened in different countries of the world. And when we shared drafts of this with members of IACD, there was overwhelming support. People said, this is simple. It's easy to understand. It's very helpful in course design. I can understand it as a student. I now know what I should be learning as the community development part of my course. We had a few academics who felt it was very managerial, that it was very top down. Uh, some people said it's very colonial. Uh, that you know to have any the idea you could have international standards well we stood our ground and we felt yes we we can and it's been well received as a document and it, it asks basic questions i'm a community development worker i'm a social worker or whatever how do i engage with that community how do i first meet with that community how do i dress how do i talk how do i what impression am i going to give when i'm working with that community how do i listen so it's all these questions about how I engage with the community. And then the, that's one of the areas that we look at. Uh, another one is if I'm doing educational work, what does that mean? Does it mean I bring everybody into a classroom? That they have to be in the, the only place you can learn is in a school? Or can I learn under a tree? Or can I learn in a pub? Or can I, can I work with the community group in a community center or something less formal? And what type of approaches would I use working with people with very low literacy levels or maybe different, you know, they had different educational attainment or whatever. And also, how can I learn as an educator to uh, uh, value the wisdom of the people I'm working with? It's not a teacher student relationship. It's more of an equal relationship about challenging learning learning from each other so that we looked at one of the other areas of competencies are what are the educational skills and knowledge that you can use and these have been drawn from all over the world over decades uh, the wonderful thing about community development there is no single discipline that can own community development and there is no single country that invented community development if you look at the work we're doing uh, it's drawn from Brazil, from South Africa, from, from wherever. Indeed, and we're now learning from the post-Soviet space about working with a type of community that a lot of people in other countries had, had missed, frankly, or not worked with as effectively as we should. Some of the most disadvantaged people in the community, people with a disability. You know, so this learning is continuous. So th there are eight. Uh, one of the other ones is, what evaluation techniques do I use? How can I value, evaluate if this project program has been any good? Has it been successful? What are the outcomes? And also how can I evaluate it 
with the people I'm working with? What was their view? What's their, the cons if you like, consumer view, you know, that, that they were creators of this project, this campaign or this program, and uh, what's, how did they feel it went? So we go through a number of, you know, there's another competency on planning. How do I plan my program when I'm working with a group within the community? What different techniques and uh, approaches could I have for participative planning? Um, that is not top-down planning, it's working with the people that you're working with. So what we've said, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, to know how to engage respectfully and in a listening way, that, that should be universal. Mm. You know, that there are certain basic, just good, intelligent behavior of the way you research an area and you try and understand the people that you're working, you do your homework before you just go in like a bull in a china shop and mess things up. And uh, so many of the, this is what Daniel has been talking about, of top-down development mm -hmm. has often destroyed things, actually ruined things, and it's cost a lot of money. Yeah. Top-down housing development, top-down approaches to how we should institutionalize the dis disabled people or whatever, it costs a lot of money and it's it caused a lot of pain. So I think what we've been looking at, uh, can you universalize, if you like, these common basic areas of skills and knowledge? And that's what the standards are about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlie. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, in the near future, uh, we will have the opportunity to translate one uh, another very important publication um, from English to Russian. Uh, I hope we will have one more interview and talk about standards in detail. Uh, and we will talk about uh, the next book um, on the basis of the international standards of community development practice. So thank you so much. I know that Vanessa have some more questions and he, she's looking at me. So uh, now I am mute. Uh, thank you very much, Vanessa, for the questions. Thank you very much, Daniel and Charlie. It's so nice to see you. So bye. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, to be honest, I have a question from Facebook from our audience. And uh, they are asking Daniel, they are asking Daniel, uh, who can um, be, who can become the participant of the uh, World Community Development Conference uh, to 2021, and uh, what should they do for to become the participant? Daniel, you, your sound. Yes. Yeah, yeah. the the conference the conference is open to all those who are interested in working with communities, and so it's an open conference. And from what Charlie has just explained about the standards, all those people, all those who are working with communities, or have an interest in working communities, basically, of course, they, 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 there's a lot that they share, and that they, that's also of interest to them. And so it's an open conference. All that they need to do is just express their interest. If they go to the conference uh, website, they should be able now to find all the all the information and about uh, if they want to make a presentation or they just want to come in and just listen and be participants and make contributions, that they are welcome. There is in the website there is a portal for registration where we would ask them to to register. We are charging a nominal fee of. Uh, 50 US dollars for international delegates. And it's on the basis of their registration and the payment of the $50 that then will be able then to send them the links for joining the, the different sessions that, uh, that, 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 that could, would constitute the conference. We are trying as much as possible to time the conference in a way that uh, we accommodate the extreme time zones so we'll be starting around uh, 11 a.m. Nairobi time and uh, finishing at around 8 p.m. That's uh, 20 hours Nairobi time. That way then we can get the Americans when they are sleeping and the Australians 
they can stay up late a bit to catch up with the conference and it's just and then the sessions the sessions will be sent will also as much as possible as you've discussed there will be an attempt to make some translation where possible but then we'll try to also we'll try to record so that then people can also have access to the sessions which they and they miss or which they may not be able to be available to participate in and so we are welcoming all those who have an interest, let them go to the conference website, www. Um, wcdc 2020scpdkorg Then they should be able now to, to get uh, all the details. But in the event they have any questions, again, they can write to us on email and we'll be able to respond to them as promptly as possible. Thank you, I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Daniel, um, could I ask a question? Is it too late for people to put in a, a request to make a presentation? No, it is not. We are receiving abstracts up to 1st of May. We are receiving abstracts. We are receiving proposals up to 1st of May, 2021. And then also registration will close on uh, May 10th. 10th of May is when we will close registration. So that now we can be able now to process and then be able then to know who is registered and then we can see how to, how to do the program. And then now we can send the links to the people in the different sessions that they're interested in. So it's still, we still have a month or so, actually more than a month for presentations to be submitted. We've, from, I wrote to delegates two days ago, those who had this, submitted their, their proposals last year before we postponed. And many of them have confirmed and we have now new ones who are submitting abstracts after we all, now there's clarity about uh, what is happening. So we're welcoming abstracts and the proposals. For everyone who's watching this video right now, uh, I want to say that in comments to this video, we will send the link to website uh, where you can get full information and uh, registration form to the conference. So it will be easier for everybody to get the, uh, the registration. And uh, uh, if we're talking about the uh, oncoming conference, uh, I would like to ask Charlie and Daniel um, about World Community Development Conference. Um, so when we're talking about this event, uh, we are talking about uh, around 300, 500 participants meeting together, right? Usually, yes. yes. <laughs> Every previous one, that's exactly the model. Yes, yes. yes. In the, in the past, uh, it, was, it has just been about that. In the 2019, it was about 400. In yeah. 20, no, 2018, it was about 400. In mm. 20... 19 it was about 550 delegates in a lot of people in dundee now now that it is now virtual there is no movement you just open your computer open your mobile device and log in then this one there is no limit to the number of people who can accommodate for as long as you are able to log in and follow and follow the conference we can have as many people as as possible so this is one time we are expecting to have very large numbers of people attending because of now the convenience of technology. Yes, absolutely. The virtual version of the conference gives a lot of opportunity for everybody. So um, that's why I need to ask one question. Please tell us, uh, is it hard to organize such a big event uh, for people with people from different countries, uh, different cultures? And uh, what is the main point you should keep to hold them all together and to organize their interconnection? Yeah, could I just say, I'll talk about what we did in the past, but I think the, the, there is a future here that future. Kenya is pioneering for us. So, so Daniel will be better. The, the conference is in the past had took many forms. So you would have a, ex, a, a plenary um, where everybody comes together and you would hear 
maybe sometimes quite famous people. It could be a politician or it could be a, a world expert from the United Nations or somebody who's written some very influential book. So that's some, some of the form it does, sitting, listening to these people. And particularly when we've held conferences in the past, uh, the governments in the country where we've held those conferences uh, quite like to have an opportunity for their government minister to say how wonderful community development is and we're so pleased that you've come to our country and all of this. So some of it is listening to those. Some of the plenary sessions where everybody is in the hall are listening to a bit debate, a discussion, a panel discussion, rather like we're having now, but a physical panel discussion in the room. Then other, that's just a small part of the program, those plenary debates. Most of it are small workshops where you maybe have 10, 15, 20 or so people who are meeting, uh, sharing their ideas, listening to some presentations, watching some films. Those presentations don't have to be, uh, you know, an academic talking about their research. It could be practitioners who've made a film or a performance or some, some more visual way in which they want to share their experience. But these workshops are much smaller. Then we also have um, usually a marketplace. So after the sessions, the workshops and the plenary, you can go around, you can go to stalls and you can pick up information from people from different parts of the world. Who We encourage people to bring their information and to share that and they have their banners and all this sort of stuff. Uh, then in the evenings, we have cultural events. So that could be dancing, singing, folk music, traditional music, whatever. Uh, in Scotland, of the, you know, things like Scottish dancing is very pop popular in Scotland, <laughs> uh, stereotype there. But um, now, obviously, that's how we did it in the past. So it's cultural, it's small workshops, and it's big. And, and also, sorry, I'll just say final thing before. It's also you meet in the bar, or you meet, you just network with people and you form your own. You've realized that there's some people there that you didn't know were there. So you set up your own fringe meeting, a fringe event. There's always space in the past because we help, tend to hold these in universities often because they can give us the space for people to stay as well as uh, uh, breakout rooms and these sorts of things. Now, over to 2021, obviously, a lot, a lot of that is more challenging, but that's that's how we organised it in the past. And there was a planning committee that would organise uh, all, all of this and have the richness. And you know it, inclusive practices produce some wonderful conferences, which include drama and art and experts talking and small working groups and a plenary group. So you know what it's like. And that's what we did too. But everything has now changed. Daniel, over to you. Thank you, Charlie. And uh, that is what we were trying to do until now we realized we kept on hoping that we'll have a conference where we have people coming in and possibly a small group also online. Then we realized it might be not possible to have two conferences running at the same time because running a virtual conference and running a physical conference at the same time is a huge, huge challenge. And so now what we are realizing is that we have to be a lot more flexible and that the, to, 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 so that then we can accommodate people who are actually on the move. And the way to do it then is uh, to put together the documentation and, and the communication material together so that as many people can have access in very clear terms in terms of what exactly is happening and then continuous communication. And what we are, we are realizing amongst us is then we need to have teams and the people who are already thinking on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of what needs to be done and responding also to questions that are coming and the people asking questions which they are also expecting responses immediately. And so that, that be, means then a very, a very versatile team that is working on the computer on a continuous basis. And then of course, expertise in then uh, managing the, 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 the technology so that then you can be able to address the different the needs of different people at the same time. What you've realized is that uh, people read selectively. Even when you give information, people still come ask the same questions. And that means then you need to have all the information in a way that... Can 
connection problems again. Yes. I think. Some problems with uh, internet. Yeah. Uh, maybe I will. Uh, so I would like to use this pause uh, when we are waiting for Daniel and to read some comments from Facebook. Uh, there is a comment from Dinara Sultan. Uh, she she's right down. Good evening, our friends and colleagues. Uh, greetings from sunny Georgia. Dear Charlie and Daniel, very glad to see you. Smiles. Go <laughs> Kharki uh, Kilova. Uh, we are very glad to see you. Everybody is missing Charlie. Uh, Aidana Volimesova, good evening. It is very interesting meeting. Uh, we are very glad to see you, everyone. Daniel, are you here? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I lost my, I lost my, I lost my communication, and that's also another. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, problems with uh, communication. That, that you need to have a, a steady communication system and that's part of also our preparation where now is part of we are trying to get a system where we'll have an assured strong continuous network all through during the time that we are with that we'll have the conference in place and also getting technical support so that now is no longer just us organizing the conference we also need to have people who are technically competent in managing the the the, 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 the computer systems and the yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's far more complicated this year than I think it has ever been. Um, yeah. So, and clearly, we're, as we're experiencing now, you know, there are going to be breaks. Um, but I think people understand that, and people are told, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That, that we're in this in this period, but. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie, before we will finish. Um, I would like to ask you to give some uh, several practical advice for the participant who are going uh, to uh, to take part in the conference uh, for the for the very first time uh, for the participants from post-Soviet uh, countries. Uh, what they should keep in their mind uh, to make their um, to make their including to the uh, World uh, Community Development Conference more useful? I mean, first, IACD must apologize that its conferences are in English. And that is, uh, will stop many, many thousands of people from being able to attend. Um, but through, obviously, the wonderful work that inclusive communities are doing, we're able to, in fact, practices are doing, there will be some translation of of that. I think the important thing when I, for previous conferences, but I think in a way for this in a virtual setting is um, to, to really take, take the opportunity to meet people, that not just the usual people that you know. So when you are in a small workshop, even in a virtual setting, um, introduce yourself, say what you do, and hopefully the facilitator of the workshop will go around the room and get everybody doing this. And, and then there'll be someone who'll make a presentation and, and the time will be given for discussion. But the important thing is to remember that you are as wise and probably know as much about the sub subject as the person presenting it. So don't go to the conference thinking, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm just there to listen, listen, listen please share your expertise. It is really important. That's a whole, it's an ethic of community development that everybody has something to share. I'm just saying, uh, Daniel, uh, you know, I was asked the question, what, you know, how would you prepare for going for the conference for the first time? And I think it is, it, it is to share, be open and share your experience. Certainly one thing we've known in the past, which is about welcoming people to a conference so always on the first night, there was a welcoming social event, yeah. uh, you know, with drinks, and it was less formal. It was in for, and for all the international participants. I don't know how Daniel is going to be able to deal with that. It's, it's impossible, really, I would think. It's incredibly difficult this time. But 
I think certainly at IACD and I'm sure at the Kenyan Association, it's about welcoming everybody. Share, please come sharing your your experience, not not just to listen, and and share your. So, I mean, presumably this time there'll be an opportunity. I, I don't know, Daniel. I'm asking you a question, but if someone's in a workshop and they hear something interesting that they know about, uh, presumably there might be some way they can say, "Oh, have you seen this this report, or have you seen this film?" Some way in which people can share their experiences too so i i think come to cut you know it it, it 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 will be a very welcoming conference i'm absolutely sure well th th that's a challenge and we'll find a way of, of uh, creating some platform where there is sharing and what what has so obviously daniel still have some problems with internet uh, but it's okay because uh, we are going to see uh, Daniel a lot of times more uh, <laughs> this, Quite right. this month. And uh, we hope that you, Charlie, will join us too also. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And uh, so, uh, unfortunately, we are going to finish our live stream for today, just for today. Uh, but this is just the starting point to promotion uh, virtual world community development conference on inclusive practices platform. And uh, I want to thank you, Charlie and Daniel, uh, for this uh, very, very interesting conversation. And it was so nice to talk to you and to be involved into this important process. Uh, so for our audience, uh, I want to say that uh, you need to stay in touch with us, send your questions, and we will be very happy to and very glad to answer them. Uh, and uh, as I was saying in co comments to this video, we will send the link to website where you can get the full information and the registration form for, uh, for the uh, conference. And we will be very happy to see you all uh, on community uh, on world community development conference in Kenya uh, and Daniel uh, do you have uh, something to tell to our uh, participants to participants who want to take part in the uh, world community development conference in Kenya mm -hmm. no unfortunately uh, still technical technical problems uh, but okay, we uh, for oh, today. Oh, he's back. He's back. Yeah, he's back. Daniel, you're back. <laughs> so, sorry, this no. challenge. So my Wi-Fi has become a bit unstable, but uh, there was also it's also competition. I have my my, my children also on on YouTube, so I asked them to <laughs> to reduce on the consumption of the broadband. <laughs> so, I think that was the challenge, and so. For all those who, who plan to come to the, to, and attend the conference, mine is to welcome you and assure you that uh, this is our, our dis our, another discovery of how to, how to participate in a virtual conference. It's a learning process for all of us. Well, suggestions are welcome on how to make it better. And mm. So, okay, uh, I think that uh, Charlie, Daniel, thank you so much for this meeting. Uh, thank you everybody for this meeting and uh, we will see you soon. Mm. Thank you, Daniel. Goodbye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>